What is going on, guys? Bank from Aridex Digital, a marketing agency and software company built by a landscaper for landscapers. And in this video, I'm going to share with you guys some mistakes that you don't want to make with your landscaping website. Um, and just a quick disclaimer before we get right into the meat and potatoes of this video. This is formulated off of my opinion, not only coming from my experience as a landscaping business owner, but also from having done close to a hundred probably consultations at this point, speaking with other landscaping business owners, and also as a marketer where my livelihood basically depends on me being able to generate results um, and help landscapers take their digital assets and make them not only profitable, but assets for their business where they generate leads and actually serve a purpose uh, beyond just looking pretty and serving kind of like as an online business card. So for those of you guys that don't know who I am or maybe want a little bit more context, uh, basically over the course of three years, I worked in the landscaping business and then started, scaled and eventually sold uh, my own landscaping company. And for the past year or so, basically I've been helping other landscaping business owners um, increase their revenue and grow and scale by utilizing their digital assets. So their Google business profiles, their websites, uh, their social media, as well as some of my own sites to help generate uh, more leads, also paid traffic and things like Google and Facebook ads as well. So if that's something you need help with and you're interested and you find the information in this uh, video valuable. There will be a link in the description if you want to book a call with me and learn about maybe how we could do that for your business as well. But anyways, let's get right into it. So some mistakes that I see people make all the time with their websites, right? And again, this is my opinion. This is not me saying this because I feel like I'm better or you should buy from me instead. But this is just literally me looking at it from a consultant sort of perspective. And I think a lot of the services and the things I'm about to talk about genuinely prey on the fact that a lot of business owners know that they need a website, but they don't necessarily understand what constitutes a good website from a bad one and also what makes a website valuable and what's going to allow for a website to actually generate results and actually um, be a productive asset for your business. So those are some things that I'm going to address. Uh, I just wanted to make that clear that I'm not here trying to sell you something or turn you away. I'm not going to name drop any of the other service providers that I'm specifically mentioning in this video. Just I don't feel the need to do that but i want you guys to be aware of some of the things that are out there and just give you honestly a more informed perspective on whether or not that's the good choice for your business because i understand also that everybody's at a different point um, along their journey and when you're just getting started money is tight you know you got to buy a truck a trailer mower all this other stuff equipment's expensive labor's expensive so the cost of growing and scaling your business uh, especially in the beginning phases is expensive. And so for some guys that really just, they know they need a website and they have to get something off the ground. A lot of times they are the ones that I don't want to say fall victim to, but you know, they, these services for them look like a much better deal than they actually are. And I'm going to explain why. So there are plenty of places on the internet where you can go and get a website set up for $0, right? For free, allegedly. But let me tell you something. In this world, nothing is free. And most of the time, if something is free, you are the product, right? And now similarly, where you as a landscaper, if you have ever gone to an estimate and the client or the potential client or customer says, yeah, I know a guy that does it for cheaper. I know a guy who'll do it for this. Most of you that have been in the game for a while know that those aren't the types of customers that you want to deal with anyways the bargain shoppers, the I know a guy who'll do it for less. Those are not the types of people um, that you really want to be doing business with, right? And I'm not saying anything about the people that are offering these websites for zero dollars. I'm just saying, generally speaking, there is some sort of catch, whether you're paying for the hosting or they're taking some amount of your data or information and using that for other things. Regardless, if something's free, more often than not, you are the product and nothing is free in this world. So they're making money off of it somehow. Now, also there's kind of like the middle tier of that where you can go get a website designed. Uh, a lot of times it's like an AI generated, um, just quick templatized kind of run of the mill bread and butter website, like a one pager 
that you just from one uh, from like the home landing section all the way to the bottom, you just scroll. It's a one page site. It's got a little bit about you, your services, contact section. Maybe it's got your reviews on it and a link to your Google business profile or something like that. I've seen a lot of those as well, where it's like, hey, for 500 bucks, you put your credit card in and you get an instantly generated website on the back end of it in like two minutes or something, which is great. Um, and the fact that they're able to offer that service and get a quick turnaround almost instantly is great. However, the thing that I would recommend not doing in this particular uh, example is, you know, you want to be able to have some level of customization and control. And when you are signing up for sort of a, a templatized, quick generated website, a lot of times you lose customization. They're going to run it through a template. They're going to have an AI kind of just generate content based on the resources you give them. And you're also sacrificing a bit of control. Um, I know that just based off of all of the interactions that I've had with clients of mine where they decide that they want me to build their website or do any amount of marketing services for them and they have to get their information, get their website login, get all that other uh, critical information, which as a business owner, if you can't log into your own website, that's kind of a problem, right? I feel like maybe you don't need to, you should trust the person that is handling that for you. But ultimately, it's like not having the keys to one of your trucks, right? You want to be able to get into uh, an asset of your business at any point in time and just to have that little bit of control and security, right? So it's a lot of times you sacrifice that as well. And I've had plenty of issues with guys that want someone else, whether it be myself or, you know, another agency or a freelancer to kind of take over control of their website and they can't get the logins or credentials or, you know, whatever from someone else that has built their stuff in the, in the past. So that can be an issue as well. Um, a lot of times also because of the lack of customization and control, these cheap websites tend to run into issues with ranking. Now, this is where I want to get into kind of uh, the meat and potatoes here, because again, based off of doing, you know, close to a hundred consultation calls, basically at this point, it seems like there's a pretty common understanding amongst not only business owners uh, in general, but among landscaping business owners in particular, because that's pretty much exclusively who I deal with, that most guys understand that they need a website, right? And typically at the very beginning, there's two reasons for this, right? Either they need a website because a client that they currently have or are about to potentially work with asks, can they see one? So they're using the website to show a previous client or they know that you can use a website to generate new clients, right? For lead generation. So they either need a website to show previous clients or they want to use it to get new ones. That's pretty much, you know, everyone that I've talked to is in one or two of those boats. And realistically, in a perfect world, you'd have one that does both. The next thing is there's a very big difference between website design and SEO. Now, for a lot of you, the lines on this, the difference might be very blurred. And so I hope I can make this crystal clear so that if you choose to work with someone to build or design your website, you understand exactly what you're getting into. And you also know um, the difference between these two roles because they are completely different services. They are completely different professions and the skill set and the expertise for both of them is something that you could spend a lifetime uh, developing. So website design is exactly what it sounds like. These are people that are going to design um, or code or customize the look, appearance, and excuse my handwriting here, and the function of your website, right? So basically everything from a visual aspect, this is what a designer is, right? It's the same as a graphic designer. Now you can go out there and you can get a pretty logo. You can get a pretty website. If it looks great, that's awesome. You know, that's a professional um, look for your business. And anyone that comes across that website is, is going to think, wow, 
this guy spent some money to have his website look nice, which is awesome, right? However, that leads very nicely into the next section of this, which is a website designer is not an SEO. An SEO is search engine optimization. So more often than not, one of the issues that the people that I talk to have is they say, Hey, I had this guy I spent a couple grand getting my website. It looks great, but it's not showing up in search results. So if I tell a client of mine to Google our business name, or if someone in my area is searching for landscapers near me or hardscaping near me, uh, outdoor uh, living design near me, something like that, my website doesn't show up. And this is where we get to the primary differences between a website designer and an SEO, right? The website designer oftentimes is not an SEO unless you uh, talk to them and have a little bit of knowledge about the two of these and you can talk to them and just establish a difference and really understand the scope of what services they're going to offer are. But the designer is going to build and make your website look pretty and the SEO is going to get your site to rank in Google. And those are two things that you need to know because a lot of times there are website designers that offer an SEO package or like sometimes with these cheaper websites, the 500 bucks, it's like, you know, instead of paying a one-time fee for the website and then paying an ongoing retainer for an SEO or a marketer to work on your website, they'll say, Hey, for 300 bucks a month or for 400 bucks a month or 500 bucks a month, you can get the website, get the hosting and get SEO services attached to that. Now, let me tell you why this is a little bit of an issue. If someone tells you that they can do SEO on your website for a couple hundred dollars a month, chances are the quality and the speed and the velocity at which they are going to perform SEO services on your site is minimal. Uh, because just speaking from experience as someone that builds ranks and rents my own websites, as well as does this for clients, the minimum amount that I will spend on SEO for a website is about 500 to a thousand dollars a month. That is what it takes to move the needle forward. Now, a lot of times also people don't understand that SEO is a process and it takes time. And a lot of times when you build a new website, you'll end up in what's called the Google sandbox. So the first month or two of your website's existence, it will not be served on Google. Um, it'll just be kind of in this limbo period where Google is crawling and indexing the pages on your site, trying to figure out more about what your website is and specifically who you are, where you are and what you offer. These are very important questions and very important things that you want to make sure you are signaling on your website, not only to the clients and the visitors of the site, but to Google as well. And the ways that you go about doing those two things are very different. So when you build your website, there's a lot of things that you want to include on the website, but making sure that you have service indicators, talking about what particular things you do, location indicators, again, where you're doing those things. And then also kind of making uh, call outs or calls to action for specific audiences. So I have some clients where they only do commercial work. So we want to make sure that the messaging and the content and the copywriting on the website exclusively talks about how this business serves other businesses and does commercial landscaping, commercial snow removal, commercial, you know, installations and stuff like that. So this is all stuff that really requires a lot of understanding of not only the industry, but also what the goals for each client are. And a lot of times there's going to be a lapse in this understanding between your website designer and your SEO. And again, there's a lot of people that claim or think they understand both, but more often than not, you're probably buying one service or the other. And it's important for you as the business owner to know the difference. That's the only thing I'm trying to convey in this video is getting you to understand that if someone says they are going to design a website, that means that they are going to create a site for you. It's going to be published, but that does not guarantee to any degree that it is going to be ranking in Google or ranking in Google high enough to where it's going to actually start getting clicks and people are going to be able to find it. Most websites are going to land on either the second or third page of Google, depending on how much competition there is in your area. 
And unless you do uh, some, you know, link building, some social media linking, some other stuff, uh, some visual content, whether it be through a YouTube channel <clears throat> or other means, unless there is content being created, blogs are great for this as well. Um, but really the biggest thing is link building and creating backlinks or hyperlinks, however you wanna look at it. Um, places on the internet outside of your website that link back to your website. And the biggest reason why this is important is because Google primarily works on two different things, right? Trust and authority. Now, when you think about this, what are some of the things that would signal to Google that you're trusted for one, because at the end of the day, this is really simple to understand if you reverse engineer it from Google's perspective, understand that Google is a service, Google's a business, and they are a search engine and their job, the business that they have is to get people the information that they want as quickly as possible and as accurately as possible. They want you, or let's, let's put this in the perspective of someone that let's, let's look through the lens of Google from the perspective of somebody that's looking for landscaping services. Google wants to be able to say, Hey, Janet in Conway, New Hampshire, just searched landscaping near me. Google wants to be able to serve her the best option for landscaping in her area based on what it knows about landscaping and what it knows about the area and who has the most trust and authority because it doesn't want Google, she, uh, Google doesn't want Janet to search this, click on a website, click back, search something else. You know what I mean? It, it wants to make the end user's experience as quick and easy as possible. There's so many things I could talk about now that we've mentioned that, which is why like Google business profiles show up first. And then um, this is the map pack and the search ranking. And then oftentimes the organic search for websites are below here because Google business profiles have reviews on them, has pictures on them, it has links to the phone number, the website and the address all on these profiles. So it gives people all the information they need to make a buying decision as quickly as possible, right? Someone can search landscaping near me, it's gonna show three businesses, you know, maybe some Google ads at the top, but generally speaking, the Google map packs, the first thing that people look at, it's gonna see your company name, pictures, your logo, your reviews, a link to your website, they can call you, uh, get directions to your you know place, whatever. So all the information that they need is right there. Really, really important. So trust and authority can be built for your website by having other links um, from places on the internet pointing back to your website. Google says, hey, all of these other websites, all of these social media profiles, all of this blog content, all of these other places on the internet are pointing and linking back you know, to this website saying, hey, this is a good piece of information or hey, these services are really solid. So you start to build that trust and authority and eventually that is what's going to move your website up in the search rankings, all right? So I say all of that to say, I know we went a little in depth there and I hope that all of this is clear. If you guys have any questions, book a call with me. I'd be happy to go over some of this or drop some comments and I'll be sure to reply and get back to you guys or make an additional videos explaining the SEO process in depth for those of you that want to know about it. But really what I wanted you to understand from this video is your website designer is not an SEO and your SEO is not a web designer. Now, every once in a while you come across someone like myself who knows a bit about both or who has a team um, of people that are experts on one and the other. And we put those two together and offer a service that encompasses both. It's just important to know what you're getting. And like anything, most of the time you get what you pay for. So if you're gonna buy a free website or you know, put your information and get a free automatically generated AI website or a cheap you know, $500 website or pay, or pay $300 a month um, for SEO services, you gotta understand that most of the time you get what you pay for. Now, I know this is a really popular saying in the, uh, in the trades and amongst um, you know, kind of the blue collar community, but a lot of you guys have probably heard of this before, good fast and cheap, right? You can only pick two out of the three. If something's good and it's cheap, it's probably not gonna be fast. And that's where the results from these, you know, free websites or cheap $300 a month SEO services, they're, they're probably not good 
and they're cheap. So they're definitely not going to be fast. And like I said before, just from experience with medium to high competition uh, service areas, 500 to a thousand dollars a month to be spending on SEO is pretty much the bare minimum. And a lot of times, you know, you're going to work with someone that is taking these services. You have to account for their man, man hours and stuff. So, you know, realistically a thousand to like 1500 bucks a month is what it's going to take to actually move the needle forward. Link building is not cheap. Content writing is not cheap. Um, getting things to happen and getting them to happen quick. The SEO process is generally pretty slow, especially if you're on a brand new website, a fresh domain name, again, kind of links back to the trust and authority, right? Google doesn't know if it can trust a brand new website. So a lot of times when you're in that sandbox period in the beginning, if you can start the link building process, if you can start the content generation process quickly and do so with enough volume to push the needle forward and get you out of that period where you can start showing up in search results, that's really important. So, you know, the good and cheap is something that kind of doesn't even really happen most of the times uh, with SEO or with Google um, services or website design services, you're getting really only one out of these three. You're getting something good and it's going to be fast, but it's not going to be cheap. That's the option that I would go with 10 times out of 10. If I could start over, if I had a landscaping business again, and I was looking to get these things set up for myself, um, I, and, I, and knowing what I know about the SEO process and about the digital marketing process, that is something that I'd be looking for. Um, looking for results, looking for someone that can explain the services that they're offering in depth and in detail um, and not leave me with any questions about what is a part of their delivery and what is not. Those are all things that I would be asking. And honestly, just from what I've seen and the amount of clients that I've had come to me that had one of these, you know, cheap or, you know, free websites made for them. And then they realized very quickly that that's not the solution they were looking for. Everybody has different needs. Everybody has different goals, but for the guys that are looking to have a website that, you know, is built properly from square one, from scratch, from the ground up and has the proper design, but also the back end structure and the fundamentals when it comes to on page and off page SEO to get their website to actually rank. Nine times out of 10, you know, that's what people are looking for, right? When people say, I need a website, they don't want a website that just exists on the third page of Google where no one can see it, right? You want a website that when someone Google searches your name or your services in your area, yours shows up at the top. And that's something that you're interested in. You want to learn more about how I've done this for other businesses and can probably do the same thing for yours. Matter of fact, I definitely can because the landscaping industry, although, um, there's not a ton of competition when it comes to uh, actual service areas. There's a lot of people out there that offer these services. So I'd be happy to show you what I've been able to accomplish for not only myself and my business, uh, but for other business owners as well. So if you're interested in that, you want to learn more, book a call with me. The link is in the description. If not, totally fine. Um, I hope you found this valuable information uh, to be helpful and maybe informs you a little bit more if you are on the fence about working with someone or not. Uh, when it comes to building your website, which honestly is something that moving into the future is going to become more and more important. Um, you know, definitely take some of these things into consideration and just know what you're getting into. All right. So anyways, thank you guys for watching, taking 23, 24 minutes of your time. I uh, hope you found it valuable and helpful. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions, again, like I said, just leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. All right. Happy landscaping and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.